We are now facing globally climate change, which we haven't seen on this scale for many centuries. Uh, the last time the North Atlantic saw the same kinds of climate changes was in, during the rapid cooling of the 13th and 14th centuries AD. We have uh, examples in the past of how people have coped or not coped with these kinds and scales of changes. So the experience of the past has a, a number of areas of relevance to the present and the future, uh, not the least in the case of the Norse Greenlanders, who have become sort of the poster children for unsuccessful societies who chose to fail, who did not adapt successfully to climate change. Our understanding of the Norse Greenlanders has changed quite a lot uh, in the past few years, and it really has changed the story considerably. Now we see the Norse Greenlanders is actually quite successful in adapting to the initial climate change, cooling temperatures, by increasing their emphasis on sealing and maritime adaptations, which you can see in both animal bones and in the isotopic signatures in the, the bodies of the Norsemen themselves in their bones. Um, and it looks as though increasingly we're seeing a situation where the very success of their adaptation in the short term to climate change, cooling, is more vulnerable to different kind of climate change increasing storminess in the long term. So short-term fix can set you up for long-term problems. And this may be the, the bigger lesson of the Norse Greenlanders. They didn't choose to fail, but bad things happen to them anyway. Long-term changes in our area is going to be serious rise to sea level, which are going to impact fixed resources, which can be really hard to move. Places like Rotterdam, London, New York are going to be very difficult to defend as time goes on. We're also going to be facing all sorts of things we can't anticipate. Changing life zones, animals and plants moving around in ways which we cannot anticipate, which may appear chaotic to us. We have a lot of challenges, and they, real challenges, that they may all pile up at once. Conjuncture of different kinds of things happening at different rates, different geographical scales, can be a real hazard when it all comes due at once. So I think one of the things we have to be concerned about is the things we don't anticipate happening. In the medieval North Atlantic, one of the things which we're increasingly seeing is the problem of climate fluctuation rather than just simply of climate cooling. It isn't that the people of the North Atlantic weren't capable of adapting to climate change, because they were, and they did several times. But what we're seeing is the problem that we share with them, the problem to be able to respond to climate change, which isn't always clear cut. It isn't always going in the same direction. Every year in the Little Ice Age wasn't colder than the last. Indeed, many periods were, were warm. It was hard to get a trend out of that, hard to know what to do. A big thing that they lacked that we have is the long record of the past, both instrumental and proxy records, that give us an understanding, a far better one, of the overall trend. Separating out the trend from the short term is a big problem for them and for us. We have a few more tools than they did, but we remain vulnerable to these same kinds of short-term fluctuations back and forth, cold, warm, hot, dry. The rich paleoecological record, which has been generated for us in the last decade or more by climate scientists, have really underlined the extent to which our species evolved during periods of profound climate change, and we're facing one now. The last time, however, that our species faced this kind of a change in temperature was at the end of the Pleistocene, and then all of us were hunter-gatherers, spread thinly across the world. Now, there's hardly any hunter-gatherers left. We're all dependent on highly structured food production systems. We're all interconnected, and there's so many of us. So we are facing profound change on the scale of the warm the end of the Pleistocene in a very, very different position in terms of our relationship to Earth's resources, to natural and social capital. We have both great, greatly much more power than any hunter-gatherer in the past had, but at the same time, our societies in some ways may be much more fragile.